Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. The famed Dragon Lady Lockheed Martin U-2 spy aircraft is still in service today. This legendary aircraft has very long, slender wings and wheels that align like bicycle tires. Placing a spy plane on foreign soil raises many political complexities. So launching and recovering the Dragon Lady from American aircraft carriers was the only solution. The U-2 could easily take off, but the landing was a challenge. Several older versions of the U-2 were modified to U-2Gs, making them adaptable to carrier landings. Long, slender wings had to be strengthened with fitted spoilers reducing speed and landing distance. A tail hook had been fitted to the fuselage rear to catch the arresting gear, and the landing gear beefed up. Even though the U-2 had a reputation of being notoriously difficult to fly, even by the most elite American pilots, attempts of landing and takeoff on aircraft carriers boldly happened in 1964. During landing, the aircraft tipped to one side of the wing and continued bouncing on the carrier as it came to an entire halt. Despite all these efforts, the Dragon Lady has never attempted carrier landings again. Not only dragons, but also the warthogs find it difficult to land on carriers. The A-10 Thunderbolt Warthog, or simply HOG, is not designed nor built for carrier landings. The warthog can fly close to the enemy, superior in ground attack. For this reason, it is designed to land anywhere in harsh conditions in a phenomenon known as austere landing. The A-10 has a high ground clearance, which keeps the engines away from ingesting debris from improvised runways like dirt and gravel. The Air Force provides training to its pilots normally in the presence of special tactics squadrons, who usually provide air traffic control at the landing strip. In inaccessible terrains, the special force would parachute to the designated landing zone and prepare the area for the aircraft landing and takeoff operation, a serious training to help pilots practice landings in difficult territories. The systems of this machine are complicated, but smart. The landing gear mechanism of the Thunderbolt is a masterpiece. Unlike regular aircraft, the landing gear does not retract entirely into the fairings on wings, which allows the plane to skid in case of sudden damage to its systems. If you were thinking of fuel tanks exploding during this sudden, unexpected landing, that's a simple never. In this event, the pilot is safely sitting in his heavily armored cockpit, famously known as the titanium tub. With all these sophisticated systems, can it not do austere landings? Sure it can. No canopy, no wheels, no problem. The warthog can still land. 
but not on carriers. Even though the A-10 can land anywhere, it still finds it a challenge to land on carriers. The current runway on carriers measures 1,000 feet. However, the A-10 needs 2,000 feet before it comes to a complete stop. This is the reason. To make it carrier-friendly, just like the Dragon Lady, it will need a tailhook to catch the arresting gear. Not only that, but also the wing area needs to be increased for sufficient lift, along with an improved engine thrust to do another circle in case the plane does not engage during the arresting process. Reinforcing the tricycle-arranged landing gear is also crucial so they do not buckle, avoiding the plane landing off course. Adding a canard forewing can ensure better lift and stability, which improves the load-bearing capabilities. Folding wings can reduce the aircraft size, making it easily more aircraft carrier friendly. Landing an aircraft on a conventional runway is hard enough. Trying to land on a short moving runway in the middle of the sea requires meticulous calculation and skill. But landing a 121,000 pound aircraft with four turboprop engines is almost an impossible feat. But it happened. In 1963, the U.S. Naval Air Test Center tested the C-130F Hercules, and it made 21 unarrested landings and takeoffs from the Forrestal carrier. One can imagine the skill it takes to land the aircraft, without the tail hook to snatch the arresting gear to bring the aircraft to a complete halt, or take off from the short runway without the cattle bar assistance. Though the tests were marked highly successful, it was concluded that it was too risky to carry on C-130 operations from an aircraft carrier. It was the first and last successful carrier landing for the C-130, the largest and heaviest aircraft to do so. There are certain criteria for an aircraft to be operable on an aircraft carrier. The aircraft is typically designed with a smaller wingspan due to limited space on the carrier. So that rules out the possibility of the Boeing B-52 operating from the flight deck of the carrier. The 185-foot drooping wingspan would simply hit the island superstructure, and the runway is too short to handle the takeoff and landing of the eight engines aircraft. Perhaps in the future, we will see larger aircraft carriers built to accommodate some of the giants of the skies. Or perhaps changes are to be made to make more aircraft to be carrier friendly. It all boils down to the good old question of cost, priority, and above all, purpose. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.